Welcome back to the Unstaged Success Podcast. We're so happy to sit down with the founders of Lift Her Fitness, Sophia and Madalena. Hi. Hi, we're so happy to be here. Thank you guys for having us. Let's get right into it. Tell us about your company, the name, the story behind it, how it started. Okay, so how it started, um, we, we have been best friends since high school, so we already knew each other prior to, to starting this business together. And we found that every time we would go out to a social event, a party, whatever it was, even just hang out, we would always end up talking about um, like our current workout routine, what we're eating, anything new that we learned about, like fitness in general. So um, one day, this is going to sound like made up, I was literally in the shower and I'm like, you know what, like I should ask Soph if we, uh, she wants to do like, uh, like start documenting our own fitness journeys on Instagram together. And so I called her up or I texted her and then two minutes later she calls me back and she's like, yeah, let's do it. So that's, I guess how it, the rest is, yeah, yeah the rest is history. Yeah. Yeah. And what led you into this career path? Because both of you went to school for different things. Yeah. And they weren't related to fitness. So what do you think led you to that? Like what, yeah, I guess what led you into that career path? I think uh, it sounds a bit cliche, but really the passion is what mm-hmm. drove us here is like throughout our own experiences. I think where that's, that's where the best passion comes from. Like when you go through it on your own. Mm-hmm. And I think that after enduring like our own hardships with nutrition and different experiences over the years, we like wanted to accumulate more and more knowledge and contribute that to other people's experiences like help others and once we kind of found our way out of our dark places and those hard times it was like okay now how can we share this with others how can we make that positive contribution to other people's journeys so I think that's that's what it was essentially like it lit us up more than what we went to school for for sure (laughs) that makes sense yeah that's really funny as you guys are talking, she's like, and then she's like, and then <laughs> so much like, oh, yeah. I'm sitting here like, like, like a water. Right 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 oh, we got it. <laughs> because you can, re- you can relate. You know what I mean? So you're just like, oh, yeah, yeah, like I get it, right? Yeah, okay. No, that's funny. Yeah, yeah, same thing. I went to school for something different, but yeah, you end up where you're supposed to be anyways, right? For sure. Yeah. I actually started, it's funny because I grew up playing sports. So like I was always in like the athletic yeah. environment. And I started university in kinesiology uh, because I was like, it's going to be something to do with fitness. And then I kind of, I don't know, I, I guess I lost it somewhere in uh, when I was at York. Um, and then I went back to school f- for communications, which is exactly what Soph was doing too. Um, and then after that, I ended up back in fitness. So it's just like, even though I kind of like veered off a bit, took found, you right back, right back to where you were supposed which to be. Which comes back to what Soph was yeah. talking about, passion, like it always shines through, right? For so sure. Yeah. Mind you, though, like, communications can be carried into everything, and I think it's a big part in what we do, sure. like, understanding how to get our message across to people, so, like... You're still using that experience. Yeah, yeah. sure. It's exactly. just not, like, specifically... Yeah. In yeah. Niche, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What is something that people would be surprised to know about the industry that you guys are in and the behind the scenes of the work that you guys do? I... I guess, yeah, I guess the industry that we're in or the behind the scenes work, definitely, um, I guess coming from a place where at at one point it was, we weren't like the fitness influencers, we were looking up to a lot of fitness influencers and it's just understanding that even when you're in the place of the influencer, um, you still have your, your off days, whether it's with your workouts, your, your nutrition, body image days, whatever that is, it's never perfect. And obviously social media, um, only catches such a small small part of your day your week whatever it is and just understanding that um yeah even when you're the expert it's never it's never perfect right um yeah yeah no that pretty yeah that first song yeah. like, <laughs> that was a really good answer yeah. Yeah. yeah and what kind of goes on behind the scenes of your business so you guys offer meal plans workout plans tell us a little bit about that what goes on um I think the biggest part and like a lot of content creators could definitely relate to now is like when you go on Instagram you see a post and you just see it and you're like okay cool but what you don't see is the, all the work that goes behind it like the creative process coming up mm-hmm. with what type of content are we going to do how are we going to film it like what props do we need to film it um, the actual editing of the content the caption writing how are we going to get our audience to resonate with this message like there's just so much that goes into every post and that's how we're building the most relationships so that's our biggest 
like focal point, mm-hmm. but also that leads us to our clients, right? We feel like they kind of know us through that online presence. And then um, from there, I, I would say a lot of other work is just maintaining relationships with our clients, mm-hmm. whether they're currently with us or not. Um, checking in here and there on social media, how's everything going, like seeing where they're at in their journeys because it's not only about when they're, again, on the meal plan with us or whatever it is they may be doing. It's about making sure that they're taking that forward and implementing it into... After their work with you. Exactly, yeah. Right. So, yeah, maintaining relationships, social media for sure. Um, And, yeah, just broadening our horizons, like trying to do new things all the time. for sure. Is that what you guys think makes you stand out from the competition? That? Or what what do you think does make you stand out from the competition? Yeah. That as well as our approach to our actual clients when we're when we're um, helping them with our services. And that is that not like one size doesn't fit all. Mm-hmm. A lot of our competitors or even influencers that you see on social media, they find something that works for themselves or that, you know, is just working in general. And they think that, okay, I figured it out this way. That means everybody else is going to do it this way and that's what's going to work for them. But that's not, that's not even close to the truth. You know, everybody's lifestyle, food preferences, um, like uh, things that they enjoy doing versus not enjoy doing, like everything's so different. So to say that one particular plan is going to work for everybody is just not realistic. And we, um, like Soph was saying before, we really do want our clients to succeed even after their time with us. So making them do something that's not sustainable for their own lifestyles isn't going to um, isn't going to achieve that. You cater and tailor everything to that specific client, so no client is the same as the last. Not only to the like their food preferences, like beyond that, like their lifestyles. So like we get some clients who love to cook. Like give me like long time in the kitchen. Like I want to be cooking majority of the time. Others like honestly, I want to slap it together in two minutes and be out the door. Like accommodate both. Yeah. Or even like some people don't like breakfast, some do. So again, there's no right or wrong. It's catering it to whatever that person prefers. And that's it. Yeah. That makes sense. And what would you say a common, is there a common myth about the industry or something that surprised you guys when starting your career, something that you weren't expecting that surprised me Mm -hmm. start there um is definitely how common it is to have these struggles like when you're going through it alone you don't really understand um like I guess how how many people it affects like once we started working with women and talking to them about their relationship with food and their own eating patterns like it sounds a little cynical but disordered eating is very common and amongst women for sure so I think that once we actually got into the industry we we realized how many it it was actually great because the potential to help people was greater than what we expected like Mm. there were more people to help than we imagined we thought maybe we were the minority who had these issues and majority of women didn't go through it but everybody has their experience with nutrition in a negative light I would say or exercise whatever it is so that's something that really surprised me and I I do think too that that comes back to um like the one size fits all and like mm-hmm. the mis a lot of misinformation mm-hmm. like right. a lot of women in particular are struggling because they're fed all this information that may not be completely true or again works for somebody but isn't going to work for them so they try these things and they think if this worked for this person, it's not working for me, then it must be me or it must be something I'm doing. And then it just, you go down this tunnel of like nothing's working, but it's, it's because you're, you're, you kind of have like a tunnel vision of like, it must be because of this one reason, even for example, like cutting out carbs completely. Like that's a huge thing that a lot of people preach or have been preaching, but, um, and it's not necessary. It's just not necessary. I'm never cutting out carbs. Yeah. And again, <laughs> no, don't, don't care. care. Like, mm-hmm. It all don't comes care. down to the person too, right? Cause we do have clients. We, we take on a, a very non-restrictive approach with our meal plans. Mm-hmm. We do like firmly believe in that. Um, but again, some clients love that approach. Some of our clients are like, honestly, like I actually prefer like eating more, like we do an 80, 20 approach. Mm-hmm. I actually prefer like a more of a 90, 10, whatever it is. Like it's, it's really what works for you at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. So like mm-hmm. Sophie's saying too, there there is no right or wrong answer, um, but this myth that again it's one way or one size fits all is just again just not true, <laughs> not true at all. I know you, we have some like preset questions here, but I I like uh, from everything that you're saying, I just want to go in on a few things that you mentioned. Okay. Messaging being so important, 
And one of the things that I gravitated uh, uh, towards your site or your page, which now has 4,500 people following, so congratulations thank on you, that, thank you. Um, is the, you do put out some very inspirational messages that hit me deep. Can you elaborate on what message it is that you are trying to convey and what those messages sound like? I think the messages, like the inspirational messages that we're trying to get out um, are just, yeah, that we're trying to build a community. So it's just that you're not in this alone. Like Sophie was saying, there's so many other women out there who are struggling with these same issues that we're tackling. And um, you're not in it alone. There are solutions. And uh, we're, we're here to help you. So uh, we try to be as authentic and as like raw and real with our followers. So yeah, and like going back to the, to the point about social media, like seeing those like picture perfect moments, um, it's not always perfect. And we, we try to convey the message that again us even as the influencers the experts we're um we're still learning every day too like we're all in it together yeah, yeah. yeah. that yeah. and and just to add to that quickly i think also that you can break out of the vicious cycle sure. when you're in that cycle i think it feels like a trap like you'll never see your way out of it like those hardships are real and like you when you live them you feel like oh my god this is just gonna be my life i'm gonna always be consumed by what i eat and um burning off calories and everything like that but it's showing people that there is freedom in life and there's more to life than your calories right. and and um when you get to that place you feel really liberated like mm -hmm. it's just and that's what you guys are helping people do understand yeah. that there's a community of us going through the same issues mm -hmm. and there is a light at the end of the tunnel yeah i think society puts a lot of pressure on women to look a certain way sure. and i know people who are watching are saying oh you know we're, we're all very beautiful we have we were, we're petite like how would you know but you know what you could be petite medium or large and mm -hmm. you could still be going through some body issues yes, for sure of course. right yeah um so uh, how how would you combat that people who are watching you two look beautiful you know like how how do they know that you would even understand the struggles that they're going through i think that's like it's very subjective like everybody has their own mm -hmm. interpretation of beauty and what's be so how do you know the way i perceive myself you know mm -hmm. what i mean how do you know what i'm seeing in the mirror right. or or what experiences i've been through what people have told me i look like like you don't really know everybody's perception of how something should look or what's beautiful is totally different and I think that you can't dismiss one's experience just because it's not identical to the next person's. Mm -hmm. Like, we all have our own journeys, and that's it. And I think in some shape or form, it comes to every woman specifically mm -hmm. in different ways. So, sure. excellent. That, yeah. Okay, awesome. So we're more alike than, than you may think, you yeah. know, we all have the same struggles. And it's just about communicating and reaching out to people like yourselves to make sure that they can seek the help that they need to look at food differently and more healthy, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So my next question, this is one that we have now on script. So I'm sorry if I threw those out <laughs> no, at you, okay. but I just wanted to get more. Keep us on our toes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, um, you, you guys are super authentic and, you know, you can tell I'm, I, I'm even interested in, in um, maybe becoming a client as well. Awesome. Um, because when you when you're running a business, it's so hard to even find time to eat. Mm -hmm. And uh, throughout the day, I don't really eat. I eat when I get home. Um, but that's my lifestyle. Like that yeah. that works for me, and I don't feel uh, like any which way about it. Mm -hmm. I, that's just me. One of the questions though that we did have planned out for you is, um, you know, how's the business going, and where do you guys see yourself in the next you know couple of years to five years? What are your goals? Uh, business is going really well. Um, we absolutely love working with every single one of our clients um and in terms of the next like couple years definitely just to continue to grow our community um so when I are very hands-on in terms of like every aspect of the business uh it is us two running it um so maybe even bringing in some extra people to help us run things smoothly uh, I think it is really important to have multiple different like I guess like networks of people working within your business um, and able to grow more and again f even like free us to be able to maybe be more creative or work on some new new services new you products preaching to the choir girl it is so, um, so important to build a strong yeah. team to be able to help more people yeah. absolutely yeah. and even just getting some fresh ideas like obviously being together every single day like our we, we we're both we love being creative um but we do have very similar ideas all the time i guess it just comes with being with the same person every day so even getting some fresh 
fresh minds, right? Yeah, fresh, fresh And giving other people who are passionate about this space an opportunity yeah. to work in it. Yeah. That's sure. something that you can provide to people yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, I think that's an excellent um, a goal. Mm -hmm. It's great to see how passionate you guys are about this. Thank like, it's, yeah. it's so, it exudes you. So, Thank yeah, you. Awesome. congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. My turn. Yeah. So, what is one of the biggest challenges that you faced in your role, and how did you overcome it? I would say for sure, um, social media burnout. So just feeling like, oh my god, like, like you feel this pressure to okay, you got to be posting like five TikToks a day, and then we need our Instagram to look a certain way. We right. need the caption to be written. We need stories all the time. Stories. Oh my god, but should we be doing live videos yeah. too? Should yeah. should we be doing this, this, this? And then it catches up to you a certain point. And I think that's when you have to take a step back and say, like, okay, how am I relating to this? Like, what's call what's calling me to be done right now? Like, what feels inspiring to do? And follow that. Obviously, there are mm -hmm. aspects of the business that just need to be done. That's right. There's always going to be something you don't want to do, but you have to. Right. But I think for the most part, following that passion, again, is what delivers the best results. Because when you're fully into it and you feel good about doing it, that's people see that, right? They see through when you're just talking about something because you feel like you have to or you're posting something because you feel like you have to. But that authenticity, I think, really speaks for itself. Yeah. yeah. So, sorry, got a little off track, but no, that's the biggest yeah, struggle. Right, no. So uh, when you're not feeling a certain thing or it doesn't seem authentic to you or it didn't come naturally, your advice would be to kind of just take a step back and post yeah. what inspired you or what makes you feel good about posting? Yeah, like not just doing what you feel you have to, right. but what you feel called to share with people. Like, right. like yeah. what do today, like what's a message that I, I want to get across? Not right. that mm -hmm. it's good to have scheduling too. And I think we try to follow that as much as we can, but also being in tune with, yeah, mm -hmm. like, yeah. And uh, we actually, we had a conversation very recently about this because we found ourselves and Again, it comes with having like a, a lot of responsibilities. So you, you kind of make checklists. You just make a, this needs to get done, that needs to get done. And then you're going through the same flow of things every single day. So we found ourselves um, specifically with content too. It was like, are we, maybe we're getting a little bit dry with our content. Maybe we, maybe it shouldn't just be a schedule like Sofa saying, maybe we need to be a little bit even like even more authentic than, than we are. Cause even with that authenticity came this schedule of, okay, today we're going to do this or we're going to do that. Right. But I guess just being more spontaneous and natural um, with our content and bringing in some new stuff too because uh, stepping out of your comfort zone is obviously also very important. Mm -hmm. And when you become comfortable with a certain flow of things, um, it could become a little bit stale, I guess. Um, and most of the things that we have accomplished have come from stepping out of that comfort zone, whether it was starting the page, okay, then starting services and creating a new service or rebrand whatever it was it was never comfortable at first mm -hmm. so um just stepping out of comfort zones as well how do important. you find it working together like best friends honestly <laughs> 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 like okay I love you Vic I love all my friends but I always say she's probably the only friend I could work 100%. with 100% because 100%. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Madalena <laughs> Madalena is yeah um that would be bad if it was just Vic and not her yeah. <laughs> um because we really balance each other out. Yeah. Like, I'm more, like, oh, uh, like, detail, like, I, not, not that you're not detail-oriented, but I'm very more, like, I don't know, how to, not as easygoing, I guess, and she is way more balanced with the flow, like. Madalena um, is the sweetest person you'll ever meet. Yeah. <laughs> if somebody walked up what to Madalena I? and said, you, I hate that dress on you, she'd be like, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, that is the type of person yeah. Madalena is. Yeah. So yeah. that's why I get totally what you're saying. In our friend group, I don't think anyone would be able to work with each other unless it was with Madalena. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. no, for real. Like, we're, like, and. But she has such great qualities that, that complement mine and vice yeah. versa. So it just works really well. You both have your strong suits. Yeah. yeah. Right? And I will say, too, with... Well, thank you for that, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, too, um, uh, Soph's, like, passion and drive and that attention to detail, like, it does push me out of, again, out of my comfort zone, out of my limits, mm. because me being a little bit more easygoing, I guess I could fall more comfortable easily or um, maybe miss something or... And so if like pushes me yeah. a lot to um to move forward to keep That's progressing. Great. Yeah, you guys so should push each other. We do I think our personalities do complement each other a lot. Sure. For sure. <laughs> How do you um handle conflict if it arises? Um I think we're both really good at communicating with each other, so that's that really <laughs> helps. 
So it's like I send her a message and I tell her, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you find it hard to separate like personal life and friendship versus the business? No, No. I I think it just like flows. Like it, like I think Mm -hmm. we read the room right, and we we know when it's work time and when. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean it has to fully eliminate the other. Like Mm -hmm. we can be in the work day and be like, oh, like what are you wearing this weekend? That kind of thing. Yeah, Yeah. birthday Saturday. What dress you wear? (laughs) But then like come to the gym. Yeah. Yeah. But then we also know when we're out, like, maybe we don't want to be talking about something the right. full night. We want to be, like, present with our friends. Like, mm-hmm. we kind of know how to balance the two. And Turn I think it, it just, yeah. yeah, it just comes naturally, I think, that part. Like, sometimes throughout the day, actually, I, I'm i more guilty of this. Like, I'll be like, so, like, what are you doing this weekend? Like, I, like, I just, like, <laughs> want to talk about social things because we're, we're in the same group and everything. But, yeah, I think for the most part. We're, we're, we're good at balancing the two, for sure. Yeah. yeah. You can work with your friends. Yes. As long as they, you know, are, are like you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. As long as like Anna. Like you you know, actually funny. remind me of someone who we had dear to our heart who was working with us, Ashley. Yeah. yeah who yeah, was yeah. very easy. Could work yeah, with an anybody. Angel. An, an angel. angel. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Bef- I have one other question. I don't know. You me too. Yeah? yeah? Okay. You, go ahead. I just wanted to know, like, if there's three things that you could, the people who are watching the podcast, that you want them to, to like, really leave here with. Three things that you could tell them that you would, you know, that shows them that you are the right people to sign up for. And, you know, like, what, what are three misconceptions about working out or about food that are something that they could gain from watching our podcast? I think, um, I think a big thing that you should know if you're watching this and you're contemplating it is that we listen. I think the biggest part about um, preparing some a suitable program for a person is a lot of trainers, again, go into it thinking they know it all, but that, that eliminates their ability to listen, really, to the person and their experiences. So we really, really, really listen to what you're going through, where you're at in life, and we take that all into account. Um, so I think that there's always something that'll work for you because everybody has their own way or method that could be tailored to them. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that really yeah. came out the way I wanted to, but you know what I mean? Like, like yeah. it's custom. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're customizing plans based mm-hmm. on personal needs. Yeah. yeah, and we also like listen to what the person might, like some of our clients do need more accountability and we, we understand that. Like they tell us what kind of person they are beyond just like their nutrition habits right. or their workout habits. Like, you know, like I fall off really easily and mm-hmm. this and that. So we're on them. Like we are, like we really hear everything that they're saying and then tailor our approach to their personality. So I think that you'll be heard is like the biggest thing. Um, with us definitely you'll be heard 100% like you nailed that for sure and then also um, that like a huge part of why our clients do love coming to us and see great success is we'll never make you cut something out that you love like that is like our number one like rule like when it comes to if a client comes to us and they're like we just really like to eat like Oreos like that's just something that like we can never give up we're never going to tell somebody like you can't eat something because I think that that also goes back to those negative relationships with food and fitness like thinking that it's an all or nothing or you have to completely cut something out of your life in order to see progress so I think that's very attractive to our clients and helpful when it comes to the third thing which is uh, sustaining results after their time with us is up um all of our clients are able to take what they've learned from us and then apply it to their to their lives even after after their plan. My last question is I want to know why you wouldn't be able to work with Victoria. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love working with Let's Victoria. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. Tell uh, me. Like, <laughs> why did I do that? Now? You're uninvited from the birthday party. <laughs> and you know what's funny that you asked that actually before you answer is that when we were going over the questions too, we're like, oh, like Vanessa's questions are a little bit more like, um, like feisty, like, <laughs> like yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, you uh, made them all. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. We were just more like juicy. Yeah, but, like, juicy. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, if anything, it's because Vic and I are probably more similar in like, in certain personality traits, mm-hmm. like being, um strongly opinionated on certain things not that that when I say opinionated though still open-minded yes. like I think yeah. is a is a good thing to note but um yeah just very like st- st- 
strong headed. No. Yeah, like no. I don't know really how <laughs> else to put it, but if anything, it's because we're both like that that I feel like ha- having that contrast really helps. 100%. Whereas, but like having both of it would yeah. probably clash a bit more. Mm-hmm. And I'm butt laughing heads. because we fought over a branch in the back yesterday. A branch? <laughs> <laughs> she had a branch, she grabbed it, I grabbed the top, and we stared at each other for five minutes, and I'm like, you're not having this branch. <laughs> I was like, yes, I am. <laughs> so you're like that too. Yeah. Oh my god, I got them first. <laughs> we were both holding, if you check the camera, we're both holding one. We're like, that's fun. I think a good, I think a good um, leader, like I think, can adapt and understand different personalities. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel as though as long as you guys are of the understanding on what the goal is at the end of the day, mm-hmm. yeah. you're not going to take nothing personal. Like mm-hmm. I, right. I, I've said I've had meetings with everybody in, in my company where I'm like, listen, this is our goal. This is where we're going to be. Like, this this is how I need you to think. Yeah. So when I ask you to do something, please don't take it personally. Just understand that it's for the process of obtaining our goal. Yeah. And I believe, like, once we're all of that mindset, it, you can't really hurt nobody's feelings. Yeah, exactly. Unless you're like, naturally, naturally you're all going towards Working the towards the same, same yeah, thing. Yeah, and, 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 yeah. you know, that seems to be working for us. Amazing. I know what you mean. Victoria is strong-willed. She's yeah. got a strong personality. <laughs> yeah. But I, I love that trait about her, you know, and, and I and You're I appreciate to work it. With so <laughs> great to work with. She's hardworking. She's also, she Thank knows also you. when to be gentle and kind, too. Yeah. And it is, it was her birthday yesterday, so we're going to go eat easy on you yeah. <laughs> so like why do you hate I'm Victoria? gonna ask you a really hard question yeah okay you guys ready for it this is uh, this is my last question okay. but I'm gonna go in on you okay yeah. so I mean what makes you guys an expert in this field um like, where do you get your training from where's your inspiration from and how do how do we know that you're the right people to go to for this I think we maintain the truth that we aren't experts um we take a macro-based approach, an understanding, a basic understanding of calories, how macronutrients work, balancing that with having enough micronutrients in your diet, and that's it. Um, we do want to eventually, on the note of um, expanding our team, whether that's us getting further training in it, and we are constantly learning, but even hiring um, a registered dietitian to take things further. But for the most part, if someone consults with us with a certain medical issue, we say always say, speak to your doctor. Um, We tell you what we do know. Um, We tell you based off our research, our personal experience, everything we've accumulated. Mm -hmm. And that's it. We don't take it farther than that. We don't pretend to be something we're not. It works. It has worked for majority of the clients we've worked with. So um, I think the results kind of speak for itself. And Wow, you yeah. answer that so well. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We don't yeah. pretend to be the expert. I yeah. sure do when I first said it. <laughs> I was like, I'm the best stage of your designer you're ever going to be in your life. That's awesome. And no, I, really authentic, honestly. I think, honestly. too, with, we always talk about this, too, within, within this industry specifically, there's so many things to continue to learn. And I guess with every industry, but um, it's just a constant, like, we, we don't know it all. Like, you'll never really know it all. Um, and it's just learning and growing with our clients instead of, like Steph said, pretending like, you know. Adapting. And yeah. also, like, new research comes out all the time yeah. on nutrition and certain exercises that are most optimal for growing a certain body part. So, like, you adapt as science evolves, too, and you learn new things, right? So always just staying in the know, like, learning, and, and that's it. Yeah. you have any other final thoughts? No, those are uh, – I. you guys answered all my questions. I feel I like we should do, like, a, we need to do a workout. That's I've actually yeah. never worked out with them, I don't think. Can you guys believe that? I've known you guys for what? Eight, years? nine, ten. Like this I would jump on the I know, <laughs> I know, I know. Our next our next Instagram is gonna be all of us We're working out. Work out here. Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Anyways, it was a pleasure to have you guys on. Thank Thanks you guys for, for sharing us. your knowledge you with us nice. and our viewers. Thank you guys so much. It was fun. We yeah. lost our um, podcast speed cards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to have you guys on. Thank you.